Oh, yeah. I'm going to go before 12. All right, so where are we, first of all? What about that? Who, 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 whose office is this? So your this is my office. This is your it's, office. And who are you? I'm Jay Schmelzer. I'm one of the lead program managers for the Visual Basic team. Visual Basic, all yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> so, a lot of what I own and my team owns are a lot of the, um, really the, the end-to-end developer experience for Visual Basic. So the editor, the debugger, uh, a lot of the deployment functionality, uh, the stuff related to my and the runtime and all those kind of things. So, uh, all the cool features. Uh, all the cool stuff. And stuff <laughs> you use every day to make your life easier. So. Yeah. And uh, what are, uh, who are you? <laughs> I'm the monster in the closet, uh, also known as Mark Miller, and uh, I'm uh, a programmer, a de lead developer, at uh, chief architect, actually, at uh, Developer Express. Oh, okay. So, so you're kind of a promoted myself in the last minute. You That's noticed good. that? That's good. That's good. I'm, I'm president so, of Developer Express. So. Developer Express <laughs> no, is? Uh, Developer Express uh, is a company that makes, uh, we make tools uh, for, uh, and uh, Components for uh, developers. Okay. So, uh, if you're a Visual Studio developer, we got great components and, and tools as well. Great. Yeah. So, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? Well, one of the reasons we asked you guys to come by was um, we're trying we, to break into the porn industry. Uh, <laughs> oh, great. So, yeah, the PR team's got to. So, I'll check them out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, that's okay. Editing is good, it builds character, right? It builds character. <laughs> no, so the reason we uh, asked you guys to come by today was. Yeah. Um, We've uh, we've recently made an arrangement with uh, Developer Express. They've got a product that's that's still in beta right now, but being released soon, right. uh, called Refactor. And what we've done is is made a version of Refactor available for Visual Basic developers. Yeah. So if you're a Visual Basic 2005 developer, you can go to the VB Dev Center um, and download a copy of Refactor for Visual Basic 2005, and you now have what we believe is excellent refactoring support for and, Visual Basic. And this is for Beta 2, right? This is available so for Beta 2. So if you had a previous Beta, it won't work. If you had a previous Beta, it won't work. It's available starting with Beta 2. Okay. Um, and then obviously it will be available when we are. And uh, what's the URL that version. people will go and visit? Uh, the best place to go is msdn.microsoft.com, whack vbasic, and you'll see it right there on the download page. Okay. Um, and we'll take you over to the Developer Express site where you can get your copy. Now, Amanda explained a little bit about what refactoring is, but why, why don't you explain what refactoring is? Cause VP sure. programmers probably haven't used refactoring before, have Well, actually, the funny thing is, I think every Visual Basic developer has actually done quite a bit of refactoring um, in their daily life today. Um, it just so happens that most of what you do is you do it by hand, right? And refactoring really just amounts to, to restructuring um, and changing your, your code to make it more readable, more understandable, easier to maintain, easier to extend, those kind of things. Really just making your code more efficient as you evolve and evolve your application, right? So let's face it, VB developers, we, we typically build in this iterative style, right? We get an idea, we start working on it, and we just we constantly refine that um, until it's perfect. And part of that tends to be trying to shuffle things around a little bit. Refactoring, as we'll see when Mark does a demo for us, is, is really there and really just kind of fits right in with that, with that approach um, and offers these suggestions for you for, for how to restructure things and then, then helps you do it while you're, while you're in the process. Now, does this process get you better performance? Does it get you better maintainability? What, what, why should I refactor? Why should I use well, this tool? Well, the, you know, Jay was talking, alluding to it. He says we do it all the time. I mean, if you, th if you think about it, when you're just writing a method for the first time, how many times do you go and say, you know what, this variable is the wrong name. I'm going to rename this variable. Simple thing like that. Or you might have something where you've got, you're initializing a variable on the same line that you're declaring it. And then you realize, you know what, I want to conditionally initialize this. I want to have like an if statement. So you've got to kind of break that apart. There are these little things that you do within the method all of the time. And, and it's just part of writing code. It's not a question of why should I refactor. You are refactoring. You are doing this when you're writing code no matter what. The real question is, is, is do I want to use a tool that's going to make this really easy, or do I want to continue to do it the hard way? Mm -hmm. That's the question, I think. So it's not really, it's not a why should I refactor? Because, you know, refactoring tends to be a scary word because they throw in a lot of big, big things that they throw in, you know, in terms of the terms. that, And, you know, just I think that's just to, so that, uh, you know, the hot shots can, you know, separate themselves from anybody else that wants to be a hot shot, right? Uh, let's tell the truth. It's for, so the consultants can charge you $200. That, that right. might be it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you need to replace conditional with guard clause. Right, Matt? Right? Right. So. Well, mix mix right. a consultant in, the, uh, yeah. <laughs> in Australia. <laughs> so, you know, that's, it, it's really something that we're doing all the time. And so yeah. as, you're, as you're writing the method, it's, even as you're creating it for the first time, you're kind of just changing the structure as you go. Rarely, I, I've met maybe one programmer who knows exactly what the method's going to look like before he actually writes it. Everybody else, they just write it and they shape it as they go. All right. So.
So we can show some of this if you want. You, yeah. Let's see that. Yeah, right yeah. Let's take a look. Okay. I'll so I, I've got some I've got some uh, some VB code loaded up here, and uh, I you know I don't have anything pre fab in terms of what we're going to do for the demo. But I do want to show that there, this code is not the greatest code. In fact, we're in this one method here, game timer tick. It's, it's kind of a big method. Okay, so you can see I'm kind of scrolling down through this. Um, it is commented, though, which is not too bad, right? We've got this comment here, drop the row and fill the next row down, that sort of thing. And, um, you know, so we can, we can take, one of the things we can do that's, that's something that people know a lot about is, or they hear a lot about when they think of refactoring, is extract method. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to take a chunk of code and pull it out into its own sub or its own function. And the value behind this is that, you know what, if I'm going to pull this out and, and have it its own sub, I can now call this from another location. So it means I'm reusing the code instead of copying it. So that's a great, that, that's a great optimization. It also can uh, make the code easier to read. Instead of having this comment here that says drop the row and fill from the next row down, we can have a sub called drop the row and fill from the next row down. So let's do it. We'll extract this method. And uh, Hold on just a second. I'm going to close these window blinds a little bit more. Oh, sure. Otherwise, people won't be able to see you. <laughs> Much better. Thanks. Okay, sure, no problem. Do you, want to, do you want to close this one, too? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, much better. Thanks. All right, all right, all right. Okay. So do you want me to do redo any no, of that, or no, just no, just go from there? Okay. All we right. don't edit on Channel Nine, <laughs> <laughs> except for that porn statement I said earlier. That's uh, going out, right? Uh, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So so well, well, what if, if I get fired, I, you, you know I didn't edit it out. <laughs> I am responsible for a number of people getting fired. That's oh, the geez. wrong thing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and yet somehow I continue to be employed. Anyway, Jay said, do the fucking do the effing demo. Sorry, we're not going to go out. Okay. So one of the one of the entry points is this smart tag. You'll see the smart tag shows up right here when we do the selection, saying, "Hey, you know what? You can do something with this." We click on that extract method shows up. You get a little hint that explains what's going on. Just click it, and the next thing that shows up is we get this. First, you see this pink arrow right up here in the code, and up on the upper right, you see uh, this uh, legend that tells you, "Hey, you can hit these keys." Up and down is going to move this up and down, and. All this is doing is it's telling uh, Refactor where do you want to put this new method. Right. So we can just select it. And it, <laughs> it makes it easy to move up and down. Notice that we're moving up and down through just over the boundaries where a method would normally go. Right? Cool. And then we just hit enter to declare it. And check it out. We've got a new method here called drop row and fill from next row down. Now, a couple things I want to point out. Well, first let's do this. Let's split the screen. And, uh, and now we can see here's the calling location right here. Okay. And here is the declaration, drop row and fill from next row down. So we can just do this. We can just say drop and fill. If we want to, we want to I'm sorry, let's take out row. So we'll just call this like method drop and fill. That might be a good name for it. Yeah. Okay? And notice it's changed at the calling location as well. That's what okay? I mean. Notice it's also passed the correct, it's declared the right parameters for us and passed those in. Okay? So one of the things we can do, the other thing we can do up here is we can... Uh, Jeez, I would have to notice that there would have to be a bug when we when we do this. I just noticed the uh, that this link wasn't established, and because we don't have rename, I can't can't reestablish the link. Let's so, keep going. So are good. That <laughs> shows that this is real code. Yeah. <laughs> no director movies here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bugs are good, but anyway. Okay. Well, I can't demo that part where I'm gonna go to take that take that out, change that part there. Well, we'll do we'll demo that a little bit later. Okay. So you can tell my demoing skills are not good because I'm usually pointing out. I'm saying, oh, okay, bug there. Um, all right, so um, this is a beta, by the way, right? Yeah, it's it, a beta. It, it, it's it a beta is, running on a beta, right? It is so a beta, beta but, beta, so. but it, it should have been a little bit. That should have been a little bit better. In fact, I, I almost want to. I want to. I want to redo this, and uh, th this is the part that they tell me not to do. They say don't, don't try and reproduce the bug. But yes. let's try this again. I just want to see if it still exists here. Now it's linked. Now it's linked. Huh? I don't know why it failed before. Anyway, let's get rid of the split screen. So okay. we'll, we'll, we'll repeat the steps here. So we're going to say, we're going to get rid of the, the row, and, uh, and we'll just call it drop and fill. And so we, the, the thing I was going to point out is that the parameter i is now linked to the other one, so we can say, call this index. Whoops, i got caps log on. Index, changing it in both locations, and then uh, we can give this some name as well, like uh, 
Well, I'll keep it as Y coordinates. That'll be fine for now. So we'll cool. keep it. Okay, so we've got this drop and fill that's out there. And um, you can hit, when you've got links like this, you can hit the tab key to tab to go back and forth between them. Okay, so there's the original. I hit the tab key and I'm down there. You can hit shift tab as well. The other thing is after you declare a new one like this, you can press escape and then jump back right to where you started collecting that marker. Okay. Okay? All right, so we've taken this first part. We've said we've now got this method called drop and fill. Uh, and uh, one of the things that might go on here is, you know what? We want to have y coordinates be the first parameter, and we want drop, and we want i the index to be the second parameter. So let's go back up there to drop and fill, and let's reorder those parameters. So I'm going to come over here, and there's a smart tag shows up under index. We can drop that down, and reorder parameters shows up. So we'll click on that. And notice there's a little arrow pointing off to the side here. Notice there's no modal dialogs in this, right? It's all UI right in the code, right on the code. So I'm going to hit the right arrow key. Yep. And now I've just switched those two parameters, okay? Switch them back. Very cool. Okay. So, I, I, I can see somebody playing with this for 50 oh, yeah. minutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, wow, that's cool. Well, well, so, so the secret handshake is this. Right? This is the secret handshake when you've done this. You can kind of, I do it better with my right hand. Okay. Um, then once you've got this in the right spot here, index over on the right side, you just hit enter on it. And now it's going to go through all the, call the calls and it's going to say, okay, you want to replace this. And we'll say, yeah, we want to replace it. You just click on this button to replace that one. Or we could re replace all of them. Okay, okay, replace all targets. So, and there we are. We're done. Okay? So that's, so there's that bit. So now what we've done is we've basically taken a chunk and of code. And this is a free tool. Yeah, that's free. You're looking at me like I'm some sort of crazy guy. Yeah. And I get that a lot. Yeah. So it's not like, you know, you're out of the ordinary. So but one of the things we did is we took like, we, took, we had like five lines of code and we took them out. Okay? So we're simplifying a bit. Now imagine we keep doing this with those other bits. What we're doing is we're creating a symmetry, right? There's a symmetry to this main method now where, where all the main steps that we take have meaningful names to them. Okay. Drop and fill, and other things. So instead of having all these comments and these big chunks of code afterwards, we get the little pieces that are out, and we can now reuse the little pieces. That's one of the benefits. So, do you want to awesome. do you want to say anything during during this part? We want to jump going, right man. in. Keep going. Keep going. All right. So let me go into um, the next part. Um, the uh, uh, well, I'll show you. I'll, I'll I'll show you one called uh, introduce local. That'll be a new new refactoring. We'll show you. So here's an example where we have an expression that repeats itself several times within the code. We've got this new font courier of size 6 showing up again and again and again, right? Yeah. Uh, obviously, somebody started with one line and then copied it a bunch of times. That's probably how this code was originally created. Right. So what we'll do is we'll select that expression. We'll go in and we'll choose introduce local, replace all, okay? And what it'll do is we'll replace all of those with a new local variable, Okay, and it declares it as font, so it knows it's a, f a font, and we can come in here and we can call it like a font, something like that. Okay, or title font might be a better name for it. Title font. Yeah. Notice it changes everywhere else. Now, you can hit the tab key. Remember I said tab key? Yeah. Just to, to select those, and shift tab takes you back. You can also press enter, and if you press enter, it breaks the link. So the link's no longer there, so if I make a change to one, it does not change anywhere else. Wow, that's really neat. Okay. So we've taken this out. We've, we've simplified the code. We don't have this multiple font creation every time. We only have it once. We can also come over here and say, let's do the same with this. I'll get this new solid color, solid brush of color red. And let's also do the same thing. Let's introduce local replace all. Call this the uh, red brush. OK. And now we've, we've made it much easier to read, right? Yeah. And also it's faster. OK. So now let's take this code right underneath here and let's extract it. We'll do the same extract method again because I think it's useful to, walk, to take a look at this. So I'm doing extract method and you press enter to accept it right there. Draw bonus extracted. The original method was called draw bonus and there was no clue as far as a, a comment as far as what to name it. So it just tacked on the word extracted to the end of it. And so we can give it a, give it a new name. We're going to call this draw bonus title. Oops. Title. Mm. There we go. Okay, and so you can see it's changed at both locations. That little red triangle is that marker that we can hit escape to to jump back to it. Okay. Here we've got up here we've got G2. There you can see it linked up, linked up all in there. Yeah. Title font all linked up as well. And then the last one over here, this bival, which is going to be the uh, red brush. Now we probably want to change red brush because it's not really a red brush anymore. It's just a brush, right? So we'll just call this the uh, title brush. Is what we'll do. Okay. So we've now made this more generic. We can call this from another location. Um, we can also do the same kind of reorder parameters here, where we can say, well, you know what? I want to do font later. So let's go in again, 
And this, let me just point this out. When the carrot's on something that can be refactored, you'll see this little smart tag right here, that little, um, that, yeah, kind of yeah, that little kind of open box. All you have to do is just move the, the, the mouse over it, and then you'll see, a, and then move back over here and click it, and then you'll see the menu show up. So everything that's available will be here. So we go ahead and click on reorder parameters, and uh, there you can see this. And now you might say, well, what if I want to just switch the other two? Well, you just hit shift tab to select whichever one you want to move. Like that, and then move it appropriately. So we can say, okay, let's do the brush first and the font later. And we'll just again hit enter on that, and there you can see there's the uh, the replace UI again. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now we've got again we've simplified the code a little bit. Let me actually I'm going to undo those steps, go back again, and we're going to select to change the selection a bit. Oh, but this was so nice. Okay. So we're going to change the selection just a little bit. Um, this time, I'm going to take, I'm going to include red brush in here. Okay, we'll just see the differences there. So now we just have the two parameters, right? Just font is coming in, and the graphics, and red brush is created here locally, right? So it's intelligent about what parameters it's going to declare. Let's undo one more time, and I'll show you this. It's just kind of neat. Um, I can actually take. Uh, like this. Now this is kind of interesting because we're creating the red brush internally, but we're also using it afterwards, right? So here's a situation where we would expect like a by ref to come up, by ref parameter. So again, we'll extract it, and uh, oh, and now look at this. Look at what it's done. Instead of having a single by ref parameter, it's realized well only one thing is changing. Let's create a function instead. So it's created a function. It's also named it get red brush. Right, because it knows that's the only thing that's coming out of this thing, mm -hmm. okay, and uh, which is which is kind of neat. Now I actually wasn't expecting this to happen. I was expecting a by ref, but I wasn't thinking very well. <laughs> I wasn't thinking enough that yeah, this is exactly what I want instead. Right, I don't want to have a by ref because that's awkward to work with. It's much easier to use a function. And back down there, the calling the calling location, even though I selected that bigger block. It took out everything, but it kept that red brush declaration, but now it assigns it to the return result, that get red brush yeah. return result. Okay? So the extract method is real intelligent. It gives you ex exactly what you want almost all the time. I mean, essentially all the time it gives you what you want. It gives you the, the simplest way of writing that code. Okay? Yeah. All right. Um, let's... Uh, so, yeah, so what about... There's, so these are, you know, these are things that are, that are operations that are pretty... It's pretty obvious what's going to happen, right? You can you have a pretty good sense of what the end result is going to be. You know what you're trying to do because you're either asking to explicitly reorder parameters or you're explicitly asking to extract some code into a method, right? And there's some other refactoring operations that that refactor supports where you really may not um, have as good a feel as to exactly what it is you expect to happen, right? You, yeah. you want you know in other tools you've seen the, the concept of a preview dialog, right? You show me what you're going to do before I actually do it. So maybe Mark, you can show us a little bit of uh, the kind of the sure. I think the unique approach that the Developer Express has taken to that to solving that problem with, with right. refactor. Well, one of the things you notice when we did the, the parameter reordering, oh, sure, no problem. There you go. Is that the authorized way to use that tripod, by the way? <laughs> have you read the instruction manual that comes with that? Because I have not seen that approach to holding this. I wish I could get a shot of this for the viewers. But anyway, okay. So, um, this, he's going to hate me soon. Before right? I'm done so far today. So All right. Right. No, okay. All right. So, so what well, you saw before yeah. with the uh, reordering of parameters, that instead of showing you a dialog box to say, okay, you know, move it up and down, right? What's a dialog box do for you? Not a lot. It obscures your code, forces you to click OK, and forces you to work in a model that's different from your code, right? Let's instead let you work with the code. That's, that's what the philosophy is. Um, the same thing with the same concept holds with a preview dialog. What's a preview dialog do? Well, it kind of takes you out of the code, and it tries to reflect your user model by showing you a syntactically highlighted view of the code, right? But you're still in a modal dialog. You still have to click OK. Okay? So, and the other thing, too, is it's just showing you the whole thing. It's not really saying, okay, here's how things are going to change. So what we've done is we've done some, we've created something called preview hinting. And what preview hinting does, like, for example, here, move declaration near reference. It actually draws an arrow that says, you know what, this declaration is going to move right down here because int row count is first used on the line right after that. Okay? That's pretty easy to figure out. And we don't, you don't have to click OK. And if you don't want it, you don't, you're not in a preview dialog having to cancel and back out. You can move on to see what other refactorings are available. This one is split initialization from declaration. 
And here we've highlighted the, the uh, variable int row count, and you also have hi we've highlighted the assignment at the end, and give you a little arrow that says, hey, this is all going to go on the next line. And let's actually try this so we can see this. So you see the preview, you try it, and there you go. There's your split initialization right there. So now we're on a new line. This refactoring is useful when you, when you want to conditionally uh, assign a value to it. In other words, you, you, because you can't stick this, you can't declare it twice in a conditional, right? In other words, in other words, if I have some code up here that says, whoops, that says like, if you know, uh, rows, um, rows removed this level or whatever, I'm gonna, I just hit control space. I'm expecting, there we go. Rows removed this level uh, uh, equals three, and then I want to have some something here followed by an, an else and uh, uh, an end if, and uh, how am I doing, Jay? Uh, it looks pretty good. And so this might be something else, right? You know, so this code doesn't quite make sense, but the idea is that I have conditional initialization here, right, for it. I can't have this dim on this, these two lines. I can't declare it that way. So this is something developers do all the time. They split the, the initialization from the declaration, or they put it back for cleaning things up. So those are the two things that people do a lot of, and yet it's a lot of keystrokes to do, do this by hand. Right? And so what we want to do is we want to say, hey, you know what? It's a refactoring. It's something you're doing all the time when you're creating the method. So, okay, so let's put this back up where it was. Whoops, this is just there. And I'm going to delete this other code that I added by hand. So we'll look at some of the other refactorings that we've got in here, too. We also have inline temp. And what that is going to do is it's going to say, hey, you know what? I recognize that you've got a variable. It's essentially a temp variable. You're assigning it once, and then you're referencing it one or more times. And what we can do is we can say, take that value you're assigning it to, and we can just put it where all the references are. Um, I guess a usage tip on inline temp is I typically use it almost always when I only have one reference, right? But you can use it when you have more than one, and it'll ju just as easily brought, bring those in. So we can actually do that as well. And again, you have, here's, you have that preview that says, this is going to be crossed out, this piece is going to move, and it's going to be moved right there. And that shows you. So you can just say, okay, I'll take it. And there you go. You're done. So now we've moved that piece in. Okay. So yeah, actually, Mark, you know what? Could you <clears throat> could you undo that real quick? And let's let's look at something. Like if you bring that bring up those options again. Sure. I think there's a couple of really interesting things here that to, to point out, right? So Mark talked about the in the modal dialog for the preview and that kind of stuff. Well, one of the things that's a, kind of a subtle difference, right, is that sure you, you want to know what's gonna happen. You want to know what's gonna happen to your code, right? So you, you have a preview to see that. Well, we have these in order to get the preview, you've already kind of made a commitment to start performing that operation, right? Now, if you look at what Mark does, right, when he moves through here and we see these kind of previews, or these kind of, you know, alluding to what's going to happen, what was your commitment? You, you hovered a mouse over something to figure out what the operation was, right? And we just showed you right there in your code what, you know, what's going to happen and what this is actually going to do if you choose to invoke it, right? I think there's some other things that are really neat if you really focus in on, on the code. The, the attention to detail that, that Mark and his team put in here, so Mark, if you, like, scroll up to one, you notice that what it looks like, right? It really looks like someone has taken a pen and marked up your code, right? I mean, there's yeah. subtle lines there. If you go down to where they're going to replace it, you see the subtle little blue arrow down there that says, hey, you're going to go mark it up down here. You know, it's just really this really interesting attention to detail, like you've gone with a pen and sort of marking up like a printed copy of your code um, to go see what you're going to do. So I think there's some interesting things that are really unique um, to this approach and really what made us extremely excited to to work with these guys and, and make this available to VB customers because this just feels like the way VB should work. So this is really cool stuff. Now, does this work with the other languages or just VB? The the version that, that's going to be available for free to download is Visual Basic 2005 only. Now, Developer Express does have a version of of this product for sale um, that they'll make available for sale on their website that does work for Visual Basic as well as C Sharp, and it also works for prior versions of Visual Studio, so you can use it in Visual Studio 2002 and 2003 as well as 2005. So um, if you're doing a lot of cross-version cross, cross version development, different versions of Visual Studio, um, it's an, definitely an interesting thing to go look at, especially if you believe in this kind of approach to, to doing those tools. So. That was great, Jay. You could work for our company, man. Are you happy here at Microsoft? Because <laughs> you could. That was you were a spokesperson for us. Man. Yeah, yeah. That was awesome. How much you want to talk about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> After this video, I may need a job. <laughs> that Mark said so far. Well, that's cool stuff. Uh, yeah. I'm glad Microsoft funded. I'm sure Microsoft subsidized this. So. Uh, neat stuff, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, we were yeah. talking about that. I was told there was going to be a check in this, right? There was a check, right? You got a check on you and somebody's going to give you a check, no? no? So what other kind of stuff do you have? Do you have some other ones you want to show us? Or? Do they take you to the company store and give you a discount yeah, on some yeah. software? <laughs> <laughs> Anything you can do to keep them <laughs>
<laughs> they keep giving me these Xbox Live accounts, but they won't give me an Xbox. That's the, that's just kind of punishment. They, they make us buy our own Xboxes, too. Yeah, I know. What's up with that? Okay, let me show you. Yeah, I'll show you a few others. We got more. Well, yeah, we're back in. I, I said you're ready to, get to go home, right? Yeah, it's the end of the it's day. It's like 5 o'clock. But, but you know. Simplify, simplify an expression. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure, we can do that. <laughs> oh, here, here, we can do this one right here. Look, if right here we've got if not G2 is nothing, right? Well, VB8, we've got the ability sorry. to say... Sorry, do you want do I need to say that again? No, no, no. Okay, so I've got yeah, there's two ones, there are two that are optional, it's there are two available fun. here. One, we've got this really big one, this replace nested conditional with guard clause. I'll explain that in a second, but the other one is simplify expression. If you have an expression that is, that is more complex, complex than it needs to be, we can simplify it. Like, here's an example. So we'll simplify this and you can see where it's going to go. So now it becomes if G2 is not nothing. So now we're using the VB8 keyword, is not. Okay. Which you guys have a patent on, right? You patented is not? Isn't that right? Oh, then we can't put it out. out in the video. <laughs> Sorry, Move that's out. an edit point as well. How many people are getting fired after this? This is amazing. Heads will roll. <laughs> <laughs> this is this this why we don't let it. Vendor is not me. I was just saying, Robert. From this point forward, you will be com you will be commanded to edit everything, man. Uh, You'll be like, oh, but we don't edit anymore. So there's one of them. The other one that you saw is replace nested conditional with guard clause. And one of the things you'll notice is. As I use the first one, it's no longer available, so we don't see that anymore. My camera's having trouble focusing on the screen. Sorry about that. Okay. Well, now, well, you'll have to trust me. Basically, what this does is it takes, we've got this nested block of code, right? This if, so some expression, some nested block, and that's it for the method. Well, what we can do is we can say, you know what? This is the main body of the method. It really should be indented out at the main level. Instead of having this deep nesting, let's unravel the nesting. And so we choose that, and what it does is says, well, you know what, if G2 is nothing, then let's get out of here. Yeah. It's equivalent, equivalent to essentially like a, a method contract. It's like, let's, let's, let's check to make sure everything's good to go before we go. And, and it, what it does is it flattens, it takes, gets rid of this deep nested indenting, and brings it out, makes code, in my opinion, easier to read. And I'll let you go, man, because you got more important things to do than hang out with me. No, no, no. I was going to show you the really cool feature, but you don't know. Hey, I want to see the really cool No, you don't care, man. <laughs> you don't care. Come on, we care. Now we I gotta, care. Now i got to invent a really cool feature, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, i got nothing. Jay's going to show the feature now. <laughs> Jay's going to show the really cool feature. Come on, features. you got something in there. No, i got nothing, man. i got nothing. We showed everything You're else. my leg. It's oh, just, I got everything it. else is more of the same. It's just, it's just we got the preview hinting. We've, we've got, you know, the, the, uh, um, the, everything we've done, I guess, to, if you want to summarize our approach, you know, no modal dialogues. Why? Because they get in your way, right? We, we've, we tried to totally optimize the efficiency of the approach because anything else is going to get in your way. And, and, uh, and the preview hitting, we want to make it accessible. We want to show you what's going to happen. Right now, preview hitting is working on, I think, about four or five refactorings. Um, but it... Our, our intent is to add more as we go on. So you're going to see more and more of this stuff that's going to make it easier to use. Um, that's, that's where our direction is. And it's a free download, so download it, guys, and try it out, and girls, and give us feedback. If you don't like it, send email to Jay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll get you on Channel 9, right? Yeah. We'll there you go. The yeah. That's it. No, it's it's very cool. Yeah. I think that there is actually one more thing that we can slice in here that I think is also a unique aspect of this, right? So we talked about, you know, you do this all the time. People are doing this today, right? There's some unique entry points to, to the refactoring operations that Developer Express has, right? So you saw the smart tags, right, and the integration with the, the IDE to where as operations become available, the smart tag appears, and just the operation that, that's contextually relevant is, is exposing itself, right? Well, in those cases, you still have to do a little work. You still have to go and, and go after the tool and ask it to do that work for you, right? There's some times where you're just trying to get your job done, right? End of the day, you want to pull some stuff around, move stuff around, so you just start going and forget about what the tool can do. Well, one of the one example of the way Developer Express still kind of gets your back on that case, right, and helps you out, is if you look at the concept of extracting a method today, what would you do? You'd highlight it, you'd cut it, you'd go paste it somewhere, and then you'd go figure out what the method should be, right? Well, let's see what happens if, if Mark does something like that with refactor installed um, at the same time. All right, so I'm going to take this block of code right here. I've got a comment above that says create the menu window. I'm going to cut it to the clipboard. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to come up here between some methods, and I'm going to paste it. And what it's done is it's created the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the wrapper around it. So it's essentially the equivalent of an extract method. Yep. So cut and paste 
when you're pasting, you know, it's contextually based paste, right? You're pasting, you're pasting raw code between methods, it's going to generate the stub around it, just as if you did it as an extract method. The other one that we have is, um, let's go in, uh, let's go, for, I was looking at a really good expression here. Well, I can just do this. I can take an expression and I can cut it. Oops, I missed, I didn't get the whole thing. Let's get the whole thing. I can cut it and go on to a new line and paste it. If I'm pasting it on a line right above, oh, we have one. There's a bug right there. So you saw that. It was a uh, integer. You can edit out that bug, right? <laughs> yeah? Nobody saw that, right? On the screen, there was also, we showed who killed JFK just in that moment. So you are going to have to edit it out. You will have to edit that out. You got feds on your ass, man. Okay. So, so anyway, okay. So there was, so, um, all right. So, so to, you can declare a new variable there, too. Yeah. So, again, being the developer, I have to try and reproduce that to see if that's, uh, uh, I want to see if uh, the regular one gets it. Do you have to get that whole parentheses? Jeez, okay, so it is a bug. We have a bug with the uh, the cut and paste. Okay. Cut and paste. Cut and paste is doesn't get the type right. It uh, says type is integer, so you have to change it manually. So there, uh, that's a bug. Yeah, we'll fix it. It'll be fixed by 1 p.m. 1 a.m. tomorrow. 1 a.m. tonight. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Thanks a lot, Jay, for letting me show that one. Too. No problem. No problem. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Well, thanks, guys. So, this thank is really you guys. cool stuff. Excellent. And, uh, Go try it. Download oh, it. Oh, yeah. And uh, this will work on the Express SKUs as well? Unfortunately, this will not work on the Express yeah. SKUs. So the, um, Develop Express has built this using the Visual Studio, you know, the VSIP interfaces, the extensibility interfaces, um, which are not supported in the Express products. So okay. this will work in the standard professional Visual Studio team system products. All of those you know, various versions of the product it will work. Okay. Uh, it will not work in the Express SKUs. Very cool. All right. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks.